Hello and welcome. Currently, death by suicide has been on the rise. In our previous episode, we covered suicide awareness and suicide prevention. But in this episode, we really would want to focus on the reasons why men are more likely to die by suicide than women. Surprisingly, suicide is gendered, where we find that um, with men and women attempting suicide, we have more women who will have higher attempts, but men end up uh, dying more by suicide than women. One of the main reasons is because men use very little methods when they are attempting suicide. So they are likely to complete their suicide at a higher rate uh, than women. Traditionally, men are socialized to be strong, not to show any weakness, and to be able to solve their problems, to know what to do uh, when they are faced with a challenge. So they are not likely um, to express themselves or even um, talk about what they could be going through. Unlike women who are vulnerable and are willing to talk about uh, what their experiences are and how they are impacting them. Men are likely to mask their emotional pain um, a lot more. And this may present as anger or even burnout uh, from work. They may also be quiet and stonewall or withdraw from their families or friends um, and sticking by themselves more withdrawing from the world will exacerbate uh, their symptoms. Another reason um, that men uh, may be more at risk is because they mask their challenges and the emotional pain with substances, with alcohol and they encourage one another because they are not able to open up to one another. They don't have heart-to-heart -heart conversations where they are talking about their problems. They will talk about football, they will talk about politics, they will talk about investments, but not issues like, I am going through separation, I am going through divorce, my child um, is, is lost in alcoholism or drug and I'm, 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 I'm in pain and I don't know what to do. We need to have the men allowing their fellow men talk about their problems and not label them as weak, not label them as, as um, lost, especially where they have lost their jobs, where they are suffering because of something um, about life that they may have happened to them. Being more aggressive by nature, men are likely to feel like whatever they are going through, if it's an emotional problem or a mental health problem, that they can tough it up or they can continue with their work and therefore they are also likely to deny that they're in a problem and they will also not seek help. They're also likely to self-medicate and also self-treat. So you find that they will use the negative coping mechanisms and some also can actually use a prescription medication that will help them sleep better if they are experiencing sleep problem, which is actually a symptom of depression. There are also societal expectations about men that may precipitate their suicidality. For example, where we expect men to be physically strong, uh, spiritually, um, even emotionally, irregardless of what they are experiencing in life, that they are financially able they, to provide for their families and, and provide security and do everything and therefore not even show any weakness. That may prevent men from talking about emotional pain if they are going through any emotional pain, when they lose their jobs, when they lose their loved ones, we do not give a lot of support. I have witnessed men being told to be strong when they have lost their children, when they have lost their partners, or even their parents. And there is no strength when it comes to emotional pain, just like there is no strength when someone has broken their limb. We all know a man in our life in one way or another. It can be a partner, your brother, your grandfather, your uncle, your cousin, your nephew. And we need to know how uh, to look out for signs that may trigger um, suicidality in them so that we can be able to help them. And we can look out for certain signs like when someone all of a sudden withdraws and they don't want to talk a lot. And this continues for over two weeks. And, and probably maybe there's an incident or something that has happened. Maybe they have lost a loved one or a job 
and it is good that we try and engage them, get to know what is going on. Another sign that we can look out for is where they neglect themselves. They no longer want to um, take care of themselves um, and even probably even eat. They don't want to eat. They're not sleeping well. These are things we need to look out for. Or they are drinking more than usual. If they were drinking, they are drinking more than usual. If they were not drinking, they have started to drink alcohol. More signs to look out for is um, someone who is all of a sudden uh, not interested in the activities they used to enjoy. Maybe they were so keen on exercising, going to the gym, or they, were, they enjoyed watching football or other uh, hobbies that they were pursuing, and they are no longer interested in them. There's no motivation even to go to their business or even to go to work. There's no motivation to engage other people at home, and they are more isolating themselves and staying by themselves. They may also complain a lot about fatigue, uh, that even if maybe they slept for many hours, that they wake up are not rested. And this is not just for a week, it continues for over two weeks and probably goes into months when they are um, experiencing this um, symptom. Look out for change in behavior, acting out, especially in adolescents and even for young boys, and even in older men allow them to be, let them express themselves, listen to them, engage them, get to know why they are all of a sudden quiet and they were not quiet last week. Um, let's make mental health conversations very normal um, and not even to listen to them and judge them when they talk about an emotional pain that they could be going through because of a breakup, for example, or loss of a job or probably a demotion at the workplace. Let us be willing to listen to them and uh, allow them uh, to emotionally fully express themselves so that they can uh, feel um, uh, it is okay not to be okay. Men actually get quite philosophical uh, when they are going through um, suicidal ideation and they may have questions such as, um, is this life worth living? Why is life so difficult? Is there life after uh, death? And um, especially where men uh, may have lost jobs and their identity were really um, um, about their ability to provide for their families, um, provide financially and secure their families. They are asking themselves whether they really want to continue with this life because they totally feel unappreciated and recognized and they feel useless. That's a word I find men using in therapy and therefore not worth being around um, anyone. And that, that's a language and a sign that probably they are entertaining a thought of not wanting to uh, continue uh, living. Additionally, for those um, uh, with suicidal ideation and who are thinking about afterlife, there are those who may deepen in faith where they may be seeking more intimacy with God but there are those also who may feel God has neglected them, forgotten them, not answering their prayers, and therefore they are likely to regress in their faith. As a society, it is also important that we learn to appreciate our men, not necessarily because of their physical provision or physical strength, even for their character and things that they may help us with in whatever way, even just engaging with us that we need to be a society that appreciates, applauds them, encourages them, and works with them when they are going through an emotional pain or a challenge, so that then we are not contributing to them feeling like they don't deserve to be here because they are useless. Help the men reframe the help-seeking perspective where they take so long to go for help, even for physical illnesses, and it's even worse for mental uh, checkups. So, let us take them to therapy, let us take them to the doctors just for assessment, and then they'll be advised uh, what um, they, can, they can do about it. Encourage the men in their life to talk to them as well. Um, for parents who are raising boys, this is so important. Let us coach our boys and teach our boys that emotional well-being is part of holistic <laughs> well-being so that they can learn to express themselves. And when they cry, that not, that's not weakness. When they say they are sad, that's not weakness. Uh, just like the girls are able to express themselves. And also that we can teach our boys how to handle pain, how to handle um, uh, negative things that they may be going through, breakups. 
because they also get into relationships and they get hurt how can they deal and get resilient uh, when they go through breakups can they be taught how to be self-reliant how to cook how to do their own cleaning so that they are responsible and they take responsibility over their lives and they are not dependent uh, like we find uh, many men in that aspect being very dependent and that frustrates them a lot if their partners are not around them to support them times we think seeking help is or seeking therapy is expensive but loss of a loved one is very very painful and for a long time and we can't even quantify it monetarily thank you for watching and listening please share this video with a loved one leave a comment and subscribe to our channel so that you can get to get more about our topics stay tuned